Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, everything I read in February. So I've got quite a stack of books to talk to you about today, 23 in total, I think. Some people may remember that when I went into February, I had a slimmed down TBR. So I think I had eight books on my TBR for February. And I'm going to keep doing that going forward, trying to have less books on my TBR. What that doesn't necessarily mean is I'm going to end up reading less books during the month, as as February shows. Um, But what it does mean is that as I go through the month, I've got a bit more breathing room and I can kind of pick things at random rather than feeling like I have to get through the stuff that I put on my TBR because I put too much on it at the start of the month. So uh, 23 books to talk to you about today. Let's get on with it. So I'll talk through them in in order, so like in chronological order of me reading them. Um, and then at the end, I'll tell you my favourite book of the month. Um, so first book then was a Kindle book that was Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, uh, which I read for my Disturbing Books project and didn't particularly enjoy. So a, a thriller um, about, I can't even remember what it was about now, <laughs> a thriller about um, a woman who discovers um, some uh, snuff movies basically in her husband's effects um, after he dies and uh, about her trying to figure out what, you know, what's gone on. Um, and it had its moments, it had some very tense, very gruelling moments but overall, it just got more and more complex as the as the book went on, and it just lost me. Um, so I did do a review where I talk about that in a bit a bit more depth. But yeah, I did not enjoy that nearly as much as I expected to, expected to. Uh, next up, then another book I didn't enjoy nearly as much as I expected to. So a reread. Um, this was Able Team: Army of Devils by Dick Stivers, uh, aka G. H. Frost. So G. H. Frost was the actual author of this one. So this is a book I read years ago um, as a teenager I remember being really crazily over the top and violent um, it, and it kind of was but not in not anywhere near as enjoyably so as I remembered it being um, so able team are a group of um, a group of guys who go up against baddies basically and in this one they grow up go up against kind of a cabal of different leftist groups who are conspiring to um, infect America's youth with this drug that that makes you psychotic. Um, So it was just unpleasantly political um, and not very enjoyable either. So a bit of a dud. Um, After that, another reread. And this one I absolutely loved. Uh, So this was A Simple Plan by Scott Smith. So I have done a review of this one on the channel as well. So just a really fantastic thriller with a really simple concept that gets everything out of that concept it could do it really rings all the tension possible um i I can't imagine a more tense book to be honest with you it's just fantastically good so about these three guys who discover um in the woods a bag full of well a a crashed plane and in that plane a bag full of money and they decide to keep the money and it's about the impact that decision has on their lives as they try and uh, you know keep secret the fact that they've they've got all this money Really an excellent, excellent thriller, and I definitely recommend it if you haven't read it. Um, next up then, and this was for the uh, Retro Romance Readathon. So I read uh, Designed to Annoy by Elizabeth Oldfield from the Euromance series. So this is the second of the Euromance books I've read. So this was a series of books published by Mills and Boone in the 90s uh, to uh, commemorate the signing of the Maastricht Treaty and the formation of the European Union. So a bit of a weird, <laughs> a bit of a weird kicky off point for a series of romance books. But this, this was quite an entertaining one. So each of the books is set in a different country in Europe. This one, as you can tell from the cover, is set in Germany. And this was about a, a young woman who has has a house that she's rented, like a room out within that house to, to lodgers. Um, this woman has stayed in there and has, has like skipped out in the middle of the night and left her baby. Um, and it's about uh, the, the Sophie, the, the heroine, taking that baby to try and find the baby's father in Germany. Um, and, you know, inevitably because it's a Mills and Boone uh, book, Falling in Love. So it was quite an enjoyable romance. Definitely fitted the retro romance readathon um, kind of vibe in that it was like very, very, very dated and kind of made me nostalgic for the for the early years of the 90s. Um, so that was quite entertaining. 
Um, after that, a buddy read. So I do a buddy read every month with one of my patrons. Um, this month I did it with Thessaly uh, and we read The Blackstone Chronicles by John Saul. So my, the first book I've ever read by John Saul. I really enjoyed this. So this is a... Um, a serial novel from the 90s um, came out the year after uh, The Green Mar by Stephen King, the, the famous serial novel. So originally published in six separate parts. Um, but and, and those six parts are kind of, each part is kind of a separate short story, but they work together. There's an overarching plot. Um, and it was entertaining. So about this, this town where there's a creepy old asylum and like cursed objects from that asylum are finding their way into the town and like infecting the lives of, of local people. So it was just a fun, kind of quite trashy, quite over the top, quite melodramatic um, horror story. I, I really, really had a good time with it. Um, after that, a, another very trashy horror story that I didn't have a good time with, and that was Beware by Richard Lehman. So I go back and forth on Lehman as to whether I think he's harmless fun or like massively objectionable. Um, this one was massively objectionable. So uh, basically a, a twist on the Invisible Man uh, story where given that it's a Richard Lehman book, the Invisible Man uses his powers to perv on uh, teenage girls um, and do very unpleasant things. Um, I really did not enjoy. I really did not enjoy this book at all. Um, okay, next then a book uh, I had high hopes for, but just didn't work for me. And I'm not by any means saying this is a bad book, um, but it, for me, it just didn't hit the mark. And that is Bluebeard's Castle by Annabella. So this is a kind of written in the style of a gothic romance, um, but with a definite feminist twist um, about this woman who's a writer of gothic romances and her relationships with, in particular, a, cu a couple of guys. And it was it was fast paced. It was in, in, an enjoyable and, and quicker read than I expected. Um, but it just it, it just kind of didn't really connect with me or I didn't really connect with it. Um, so, yeah, slight, slightly disappointing, but it does have a fantastic cover. Um, after that, an indie crime book that was sent to me by the author a little while ago. So I read this for the Holmes is Where the Heart Is uh, reading event, the Sherlock Holmes reading event that took place in February. So this was The Lost Case Files of Sherlock Holmes by Alex Pryor. This was really fun. So six Holmes short stories, very much in the in the kind of classic Holmes style. Um, but, you know, a, a modern book only came out a couple of years ago, I think. Really, really entertaining. So four of the stories are quite short. Two of them are a bit longer and a bit more kind of in-depth. But all of them were really, really entertaining. Um, he, Alex Pryor really nails the kind of prose style um, that you expect from a home story. So just a very enjoyable, um, entertaining series of mysteries. After that, for my uh, Patreon book club, um, we read Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. So I first read this around the time it came out, I think in the 90s. Um, there seem to be a lot of 90s books <laughs> this month, don't there? So yeah, so this was this was good, but not as good as I remembered it. So I remember this being absolutely stellar. It was kind of a, a really important book for me in my growing love of horror as a teenager. Um, Rereading it, it's good. It's, it's really good, in fact, but it's not as amazing as I remembered it being. So it's a kind of coming of age story set, I think, either in the late 50s or early 60s. Um, about a group of kids in a small town where there's dark stuff, you know, dark, weird stuff going on. Um, so definitely bears a comparison to Stephen King's It. Um, there's a lot that's really good in this book. The characters are really well done. And in particular, there's some quite memorable characters. There's some really memorable imagery. It's really gripping um, and, you know, compelling and imaginative. But yeah, it's, it's a very, very solid four-star horror book. But I remembered it being a five-star horror book. Let's put it that way. Okay, after that then we get into uh, Garb August 2.5, The Wasted Weekend. So my mini reading event that took place in February where I encourage people to read at least one trashy book. Um, I read four trashy books for it because <laughs> that's the kind of person I am. So the four trashy books were um, Confessions of a Window Cleaner by Timothy Lee, which is a kind of saucy comic novel from the 70s. So Timothy Lee, whose real name was something else, I've forgotten his real name now, he wrote about 20 of these books and they were really like really quite successful in, in the UK back in the 70s and there was a series of I think four or five films made based on them as well so kind of bawdy knockabout um, saucy books where this young guy Timothy Lee who's like you know the, the eponymous hero um, 
takes on various jobs and meets various women as a result of those jobs. So in the first one, he's a window cleaner. He meets various like bored lady housewives and has sex with them, basically. It's not in any way er erotic. It's just silly and, and very dated as well. Some of the, the, the kind of language and attitudes in this book are very, very dated. Um, but at the same time, there was some stuff that was quite entertaining in it. Um, after that, I read The Rue by Alan Baxter, uh, which was very kindly sent to me a while ago by uh, a viewer, Chelsea. Um, this was just a fun, silly uh, kind of throwback horror book. So I re published recently, um, but definitely a throwback to kind of 80s uh, like leisure horror style um, horror novels um, about a killer kangaroo in the outback in Australia, but killing, killing people in this small town, basically. Um, some good kills, um, some good characters, some good kind of dialogue and stuff like that. Nice Australian vibe to it. I had a really good time with it. An undemanding book, but an entertaining one. Um, after that, another book that I've done a uh, video about on the channel this month. That was Dead Air by Bob Larson, a book that kind of came in at the tail end of the Satanic Panic. Bob Larson, one of the people who stoked the fires of the Satanic Panic, so he was a talk radio host. Um, this is um, a novel he wrote, so he published some non-fiction books about Satanism and things like that, and the, the threat of Satanists to America's youth, um, and in particular kind of attacked heavy metal bands and things like that. This book is about a, um, a kind of self-insert radio, radio host um, who... Um, has a, a like a talk show host, a, a talk a radio talk show in a small town, and this young girl calls calls up and you know claims she's being like held held captive and abused by a, a cult, um, and it's about the radio host trying to figure out who she is, trying to rescue her. Some very like silly over the top um, kind of details of, of Satanist rituals and things like that. Some genuinely disturbing stuff as well. So it was a bit of a weird mixed bag of a book and a reasonable kind of thriller plot to, to drag you through it all. So it, it was okay. It was it was definitely an interesting read. Um, and then my final book for the Wasted Weekend was uh, Bloodsport, the Executioner, book 46 by Don Pendleton, uh, albeit not by Don Pendleton. Don Pendleton just being the name they slapped on the cover of the books by this point. Um, this was fun, a, a fun Mac Boland book. This one, kind of a Cold War setting uh, with Mac Boland going up against a, a, a German like terrorist cell um, who recruit um, Olympians to be part, uh, to be uh, kind of like members. Um, it was it was very silly, but it but it was quite entertaining. Um, after that, then something much newer, so a book that hasn't actually come out yet, um, Ghost Station by S. A. Barnes. So a sci-fi horror novel, um, which I didn't particularly enjoy, if I'm honest. Um, I was going to be doing a, a kind of special video project about this. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that now. So when I covered this book in my weekly wrap up. Um, I didn't go into any detail about my opinions of it, but I can do that now because I'm not going to do that other video. So, so this is a um, sci-fi horror novel about uh, with some interesting elements to it. So, about this woman who is the daughter of um, like a family who run this big like mega corporation, but have kind of disowned her. She works for a different mega corporation. There's loads of kind of backstory and stuff like that. Um, about like bad things that have happened in her past she goes on this expedition to this to this planet and as you could probably guess from the title there's like weird supernatural stuff going on on the planet it just didn't it was just again like the Annabella book I think I'm sure some people will really enjoy this book and, and people seem to have really enjoyed S.A. Barnes's first book uh, Dead Silence which I haven't read but this just didn't click for me at all there were some elements of kind of the world building that I thought were reasonably interesting albeit retreads of things you've seen before the universe it's set in feels very much like the universe in the alien movies um but yeah i just it just didn't interest me i, I was completely ungripped by it by and by the events of it um right moving on then uh something more fun um a dog's ransom by patricia highsmith um, so part of my ongoing patricia highsmith read through where i'm reading all of her books with Anne from the channel and novella um this is a really entertaining one. This is above par Highsmith um, and a, a more playful Highsmith than, than you often see. So this one is about this scuzzy guy who is writing poison pen letters to, to various people, including this kind of well-to-do couple um, in New York. And he, um, having written some th these poison pen letters to them, he decides to kidnap their dog and hold it for ransom. 
Um, and it's just about the, the story unfurling thereafter. There's this guy who's a cop who kind of gets involved in investigating, pure, but, but like mostly just because he's interested in, in the couple, um, rather than because he has to for his job. Um, and the book, which has some, you know, kind of light kind of comic moments at times, gets darker and darker and darker as, as it goes on. I really enjoyed this a lot. I really liked Patricia Highsmith. This was a, a very good one. Um, next, another reread. Uh, so this was All Systems Read by Martha Wells. So the first and the Murderbot Diaries. So I'm listening to these. Um, I bought a humble bundle of like most of the audiobooks a while ago. So I've been listening to them. Uh, so I've listened to the first one. I'm, I'm currently listening to the second one. Um, they're just really entertaining. So a really entertaining series of sci-fi novellas about this character, Murderbot, um, who is a, a security unit that is um, kind of sent to I've sent on planetary expeditions to protect um, the kind of humans on the expeditions. Um, but, but Murderbot is also um, kind of self-aware, really into like watching soap operas and TV shows and things like that. And all, all it wants to do is like get through its day um, and then just go back to, to its, its kind of cabin um, and tune into to TV shows. Um, and is very kind of has a wonderfully dry kind of sarcastic tone um, as well. So really, really entertaining. There is some like good action, good kind of intrigue and stuff like that. But it's really murder about the character um, that makes the book. So enjoyed that very much. Um, next up, another indie crime book I was sent. Uh, this is Enemies Closer by Tom Bat. So this was a, a, a really enjoyable British crime thriller um, about a. Um, a, a cop trying to catch this this robber, this, uh, this guy who um, has been in prison for, for armed robbery, has come out of prison and, and is apparently trying to make a, um, a kind of decent life for himself and has opened a restaurant and things like that. But the cop is sure that he's involved in a series of armed robberies that are happening. Um, and it's just about the kind of battle between them. Um, so just a fun, you know, twisty, turny, fast paced crime novel. Um, I really enjoyed it. Next up then, some more indie fiction. Um, so I've talked about these on the channel. Um, the Prudence Osgood books, the Spectral Inspector series uh, by uh, Cooper S. Beckett. So a really fun series of horror novels um, about this character, Prudence Osgood, who is a uh, like a, an occult detective. So investigating weird goings on. Prudence has a um, like a, a podcast and gets kind of fed information about weird weird events as a result. I thought this series was fantastic. So there's three books in the series. Um, Osgood Has Gone, which is the first one. Um, Osgood Riddance, the second one. And Osgood As She Gets, the third one. That third one has just came out. So that, that came out on the 29th of Feb. Um, I thought this was a fantastic series. I really enjoyed it. And if you like... Um, if you like enjoyable horror that's kind of a bit creepy, has got some cosy kind of found family elements, has got a strong kind of LGBT vibe to it as well, um, really, really entertaining. I had a great time with them. Um, after that then, I read uh, for my ongoing project where I'm reading all the books by Evan Hunter slash Ed McBain that I haven't read. Um, I read his final book, uh, Alice in Jeopardy. So this was a, a an okay thriller, definitely not McBain's best. Um, so about a woman, Alice, whose two kids get uh, kidnapped and held for ransom um, and about her working with the police and also um, just working on her own to try and get her kids back. Um, so a decently twisty turny plot, some great dialogue as you as you usually get in McBain books. Um, but it just it wasn't a brilliant one. It, it fell apart a little bit, I thought, towards the end. Um, it kind of the, the tension, which was really high in the first part of the book, kind of just eased away a bit towards the end. So overall decent, but definitely not his best. There are many better books by Ed McBain to, to read if you've never read him. Um, after that, then, um, a book I had really high hopes for, but didn't enjoy. Uh, that's The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. Um, so uh, an, an interesting dark thriller that mixes uh, kind of crime tropes and weird horror. Um, it's got a, like a propulsive plot. So about this guy, um, his daughter is, is terminally ill and he, he can't make enough money at his normal job. So he turns to crime in order to... Um, in order to, to fund her treatment and ends up getting involved in this kind of one last big job kind of thing, um, and which goes south very quickly. Um, so some, some interesting kind of horror stuff in here. 
Um, yeah, really fast paced plot. The central character is, is decent, but there was just something about the prose in this book that I just found a massive turn off. I just felt like it was trying too hard to be kind of meaningful and, and deep and rich. Um, I much prefer a kind of like stripped down kind of prose style. So I think that may be a personal taste as much as anything else. But yeah, sadly, I, I didn't enjoy this at all. The prose just stopped me from enjoying it. Um, and then finally, um, Another book I got sent recently by a publisher, so this was sent to me by Titan Books, who in the UK at least published the Hard Case Crime book, so this is Nobody's Angel by Jack Clark. So this originally came out in the 90s, recently republished. I really, really enjoyed this. So this is a book about a, um, a taxi driver who's the, the narrator of the book as well. Um, in Chicago, there's some kind of crime stuff going on peripherally. So somebody is murdering taxi drivers. Um, and near the start of the book, he finds a girl, a like, young girl who's been attacked um, and kind of takes her to hospital. So he's interested in her case. And also as a taxi driver, obviously interested in the fact there's someone killing taxi drivers. But mostly this book is just him driving driving his taxi it's a bit like reminding me a bit like of uh, like one of those kind of video games where you just have to do like a, a repetitive task it's a bit like that so he drives his taxi drive he drives his taxi around he picks up fares he chats to the fares you learn a bit about their lives whether they're in the back of his cab you know weird sometimes weird things happen interesting things happen while he while he's driving them around um, and uh, invariably at the end of the uh, at the end of the drive at the end of the ride he you find out how much they tip him um, and that's like a really big important part of it all for him is, is how big his tip is at the, at the end of each um, at the end of each trip I really really enjoyed this it's got the kind of stripped down prose I really really enjoy and it's just a fun interesting really really engaging read um, I think Jack Clark has published a few more things not many things but a few more things so I'm definitely going to check out more of his stuff because I thought this was this was pretty great so that is the 23 books I read in February um, I had a good I had a good month I, I read some stuff I really enjoyed a few things that I was expecting to love and didn't um, but some really decent stuff in there so my I think my favorite book of the week then I'm gonna have to I'm oh, sorry book of the month I'm gonna have to go through the pile because it's near the bottom I think my book of the month is uh, a simple plan by Scott Smith I really did think this was an absolutely fantastic thriller um, it's just so relentless so gripping really quite disturbing it's disturbing at times but just just brilliantly brilliantly written i really do think it's a fantastic book so yeah that gets my book of the month this month so hope you enjoyed that hope you've all had good reading months in february as well um let me know what you've been reading let me know if you've read any of the books i talked about and as always thanks very much for watching hope you're safe and well out there hope you're reading good stuff and i'll speak to you again very soon cheerio